Right, I wanted to give you guys an analogy of kind of how you can look at the scriptures on a more ultimate level, the kind of the way that the scriptures, I believe, were intended to be looked at, sort of the finality of them and the, the, the grand sort of picture, whereas people tend to want to categorize and really, you know, look at the scriptures as like separate parts, even understanding that, you know, there is a big picture, but not to like, I don't believe that the church today really understands the whole picture the way it was intended to be understood. And it's because they go in and they, you know, they look at it from uh, this kind of point of view and a historical kind of point of view and, you know, what kind of a, you know, what kind of literature it is because it's all a unified story and it's all, you know, one big grand thing. And sort of the analogy you can look at is is um, the way in which a film score <clears throat> composer would go about creating a score for you know a story, and that's sort of the grand way of looking at the scriptures is uh, you know when someone's gonna create a piece of music to follow a story, usually what they do is they introduce themes or motifs, we call them. Um, it's a musical idea. So you basically, you have different elements in music. You have melody, harmony, you have rhythm, dynamic, and timbre. And so, you know, you'll create this melody and then later on you'll return to it and you'll expand upon it or you will create a variation of it maybe so timber is when you have you know the quality of of what's creating the sound so for example a violin is going to have a different timber than a guitar or a piano or anything so these are kind of like the characters you would imagine that um that the guitar makes the theme in the beginning so what you do usually is you have a you have um Oh, what's the word? I can't think of the word right now. Um, you you begin a, this score by introducing these themes. Sometimes it's in a, like the first few movements of the score. You'll you'll introduce a lot of themes, and then you'll return to these themes. And then throughout the story, you, you might create new themes, completely new themes, or you're gonna do like I said, variations. So a theme could be created by, you know, a guitar playing some sort of a melody. And then later on, it'll switch to a different instrument that takes the melody. Maybe the guitar adds like a, a variation to it, or, you know, you can combine now a new harmony to it. You'll have the same melody shape, but with the new harmony now, the, the melody might take on new characteristics and from there it grows and grows and uh, yeah it's, it's basically how you can look at it because the way the scriptures are you have you know you have a lot of the melody you have a lot of the uh, themes right at the beginning right in the Garden of Eden and then throughout Abraham's life and you know, Noah's life skipping skipping ahead there to Abraham but and um, Basically, these things just re, re uh, they just the ideas are returned to over and over again, and these are how these models are built, these parabolic models. And so, right away, the scriptures are meant to be understood as a whole, like like a piece of music. You don't you know you don't separate. You don't think that. Oh, this part over here is like, you know, really intense and dark and sort of almost uh, melancholic. And so we should separate it from this part over here, which is a reprise and it's really happy and, you know, it's really uh, motivating or something like that. You see that there's contrast and you see that there's, um, it's important to notice that all of these things are, you know, 
working together to create a full story. And that's how the scriptures are. And so we have these parabolic models. You know, there's the model of the man and the woman, which obviously is is brought up in Genesis in the beginning, right in the first you know, first section. You have Adam and Eve. And sort of their interplay with Satan and the two trees, you're going to see this all throughout the scriptures. But you're going to see that, you know, Christ becomes the second Adam. And then, then finally, we become the body of Christ. So really what you're seeing at the end of all things is that, you know, the church actually is, uh, is the body. And the two are supposed to be, you know, the man is supposed to, the man and the woman are supposed to unite and become one flesh. And so if, if Christ then is, is the second Adam and we are the body, you know, that is to say we are the bride. You see that what happened right away in the garden plays out again and again until finally the true marriage comes. <laughs> So when you see in the church age, you see in the, well, how I, how I kind of wanted to talk about was, what I wanted to talk about was, um, I was studying this pericope where, uh, where the Sadducees came up to Jesus and they start to do what they do. And that is to trap him. And what they do is they bring this, uh, this theme from, the book of Deuteronomy, and it's that, uh, I'm going to paraphrase it because I can't remember exactly how the words go, but it's basically that if a, a woman, if a married woman has no, has no son to carry her name and she dies, how the brother of the husband should take up, take up the, the marriage to, to, um, basically keep, keep the name in Israel. And so, when you first look at this, it just looks like this law, you know. But when you go into the book of Hebrews, it says the law is shadows of things to come or foreshadows. So like I said, you have your your motif is, is that, you know, this, this woman should be married again. And then what happens is you, so... Well, I'll go back to what the, the Sadducees did. So they bring him this law. They bring this to Jesus. And then they talk about this woman who had seven husbands. And they're kind of just like, hey. like, well, how do you rectify this situation? But see, they don't understand that the law was shadows of things to come. Because basically, Jesus says, you err in not knowing the scriptures. But first off, what they're doing actually is this this uh, image of the seven husbands is from a book called Tobit, chapter three, which is an apocryphal book. It, it was a book that was not included in the Sadducees and the Pharisaic canon, and so they're kind of bringing it to Jesus and and trying to trap him with it, which is interesting because. That basically implies that Jesus was, and Jesus and his, you know, his uh, followers, or John the Baptist, was teaching out of this book. And it, I mean, it's completely demonstrable when you go and look at a ton of other examples, like when, like when Jesus is, uh, is talking about how the the Jerusalem has killed the prophets, and he's quoting from the Book of Esdras, a book of prophecy, a book that he is he is prophesying out of, and yet. You know, Christians don't believe in this book. Most Christians, I mean, Catholics have it in their Bibles, and a lot of Eastern Christianity has it in their Bibles, but Protestants as a whole don't. And that's not to say that Catholicism and uh, these Eastern versions of Christianity have it right either, because, you know, there's more books that they don't have that these, these, um, these apostles are affirming. They're quoting to in prophetic um, nature. So basically, 
what you see with the whole Deuteronomy thing is you have this theme. And uh, actually, when you go and look in the book of Ruth, this, this theme was now expanded upon into a whole movement, a whole piece of music, basically. And uh, it, it, it gets played out because the law is shadows of things to come. And so you see that Ruth is this, is this widow and uh, Naomi. And this is where you're introduced to the character Boaz. Boaz, which actually means pillar. <laughs> so already, I mean, all of the names, when you look at what the names mean, you see how their names play out too. It's, it's you know, nothing is, is just the straightforward literal level. There's the, the literal level carries all of these themes throughout, you know, these parabolic ideas, these symbolic themes. And the whole scriptures are like that. Jesus says that everything concerning the kingdom is done in parables. If you look at some of these books that, uh, that Jesus and um, his apostles are quoting from, one of the big things is they all talk about how things are done in symbols and in parables and in you know even in the old testament jesus god says uh, he, he relates this whole image i can't remember what it was about something about forests and I, I forget then he says does it's in ezekiel he says does god not speak in parables anyways so so you see all of these connections now boaz is the redeemer right he redeems Ruth, he redeems this widow who's in a foreign land. Well, aren't the tribes all dispersed among foreign lands? Aren't the tribes all spiritually the church? Well, what you see is, uh, you see all of these connections between the book of Tobit and Ruth. But Tobit just is a, is a variation of the theme because now you have the seven husbands. And the seven always represents finality and you know, one of the books, Epistle of Barnabas, talks about how the six days of creation, this theme that's, you know, announced in the book of Genesis, how it carries on, and you see it all over the place. But how in Peter, he says, a day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. Well, Barnabas spells this out also, and he says that, you know, the six days are akin to 6,000 years. And on that seventh day is the true Sabbath. And that's where we are heading into. You know, if you look at where we are in biblical chronology, we are at that point of crossing into the seventh millennium. Interesting enough. Um, so also another place you see this theme carried in is First um, Timothy chapter 5, where uh, it's instructions for the church. Now remember... God doesn't change. These instructions, you know, everyone reads them sort of as, oh, this is what we should do to the widows in our church. You know, we have to follow these instructions on a physical level, just like how the Sadducees were bringing this, this uh, Deuteronomy 20, uh, chapter 5 to um, Jesus and, and trying to trap him for using Tobit. Um, so the church does the same thing. <laughs> That's why that happened, actually. Um, and they they don't understand that Paul is speaking on a on a symbolic level that that he is announcing shadows of things to come, and he's he's uh, he's also expanding on these these principles. So uh, at one point he says that you know the uh, that the that the woman's that the women, well, he, he, uh, hang on, I'm going to stop this and pull it up. Actually, 